Hello everyone. So continuing our discussion uh, from the previous session, we will be talking about the capital budgeting methods for the economic evaluation of water project or financial evaluation of a water project depending on whatever input we are taking. So, to begin with the major capital budgeting methods include the payback period and uh, discounted payback period, okay. then there is a net present value, internal rate of return or average rate of return which is also known as accounting rate of return or average accounting return and uh, profitability index or benefit cost ratio. So, these are the major capital budgeting methods which are typically used for evaluation the feasibility, economic feasibility or financial feasibility depending on the inputs of a project. They can also be used in a water sector because uh, as we were talking in the previous session that the water sector projects are generally hugely capital intensive and uh, their economic feasibility can be evaluated based on these methods therefore. So, we will start with the very basic payback period method which is uh, one of the most uh, one of the most basic and one of the most simple method for feasibility evaluation of projects in terms of economic or financial feasibility. The method is very simple, okay. the payback period is actually the period or the length of time, let us say how many years or number of years after which the initial investment is recovered from future incremental cash flow. So, if let us say I am investing a capital of 100 rupees today and I am going to recover let us say some 10 rupees next year or 50 uh, 25 rupees next year or then 50 rupees then again 40 rupees then 20 rupees 70 rupees that way let us say I am going to recover some amount or some money in the subsequent year. So, those becomes my net cash flow and the payback period is a very simple method which will tell that in how many years or what length of time. So, if it, it could not necessarily always be in years, it could be in the months also, but since we are talking about capital intensive projects where the, there is a huge amount of capital is invested in the beginning. So, generally payback period remains a uh, little larger, but eventually the concept is that in any given time frame, in whatever given time frame, the initial investment is recovered from the future cash flows is known as the payback period. So, the computation is fairly simple, one needs to estimate the cash flow and then subtract cash flow from the initial cost until the investment has been recovered. So, when the investment is completely recovered, that point of time will be the payback period for the project. The decision for, eva for evaluating feasibility of the project, whether to accept project or not accept project is based on the payback period. Of course, the shorter the payback period, the proposal or the project is better because if I have a two proposals, one is giving me payback in let us say 5 years, another is giving me payback in 3 years. So, that means whatever I am investing today. I am getting recovered in 3 years by one project or for one proposal while for another proposal I am in I am actually getting back my investment in 5 years the same investment. So, of course, getting back the investments as soon as is better. So, the shorter payback period are always considered better and for acceptance purpose 
I can accept a proposal if the payback period is less than some preset limit. So, I let us say see okay, I will invest in this project only if whatever I am investing today I am able to recover that amount and I'm, or I am able to recover all my investment within say 5 years. So, that becomes my preset limit for acceptance criteria. Now, if I receive 3 different proposals, I evaluate one is giving me payback period of for say 3.5 years, another is giving me payback period of let us say 4.8 years, while the third one is giving me payback period of 6 years. So, now I have a preset limit of 5 years, I know that a method C is giving me a payback period of 6 years. So, I will outrightly discard that because it is taking longer for returning my investment than what I want ok. Because preset is limit is what actually I want. So, if I want to recover my investment in 5 years and some project is uh, proposing to invest uh, to recover my investment in 6 years of course, I am not going to consider that. So, project C gets cancelled. Now, project A and project B both are able to invest uh, both are able to recover my investment in less than 5 year one is in 3.5 year another in is let us say 4.8 year. So, of course, I will consider the one which is uh, giving the shorter payback period because that is uh, recovering my investment is just 3.5 year. Although on my criteria both pro, uh, proposals can be accepted, but I see that proposal A appears to be better because of the shorter payback period. So, that is how the decisions are made for a payback analysis. Now, if we see if we take an example which will make it more clear how the payback period is analyzed. Okay. So, consider there is a company. Uh, in Sridhikul Haridwar okay, which wants to build a CETP. CETP is basically common effluent treatment plant which sort of deals which sort of uh, treats the effluent received from various different factories and industries. So, generally in industrial cluster because industry may not all industry may not independently want to treat their waste. So, they send their uh, effluent or they send their waste to a common effluent treatment plant and this common effluent treatment plant treats their waste and uh, sort of to the effluent discharge limits and then uh, discharges it. The for the treatment of the waste received from different industries it charges to different industries. So, if I am having a CTP uh, let us say and I am receiving effluent from 50 different industries, I will charge those 50 industries based on the how much volume they are sending. So, if someone is sending let us say uh, 1 million liters per day, I, I may charge him 1 lakh rupees a month. If other is sending me 2 million liters per day, I will charge him 2 lakh rupees a month. So, that way the charging is dependent on to the volume sent. Anyway, uh, that is beyond the context of this problem. So, uh, for this particular problem, let us consider there is a CTP uh, company wants to build a CTP in an industrial belt at Sidkul Haridwar. He has uh, the company has estimated that there would be a requirement of initial investment of rupees 25 crore and the ex they are expected to generate returns based on their table which is given as under. Now, they want to estimate the payback period of the project. Okay. So, in how many years they will be uh, able to recover their investment. So, that is what payback period is. Now, you see that uh, there is a capital investment and uh, probably there is no return in year 1. Let us say consider that the plant construction takes uh, an year or couple of years. So, you will not see any return in probably in year 1. From year 2 onwards, there are some ONM investment because a company has to operate that treatment uh, facility. So, there are some ONM expenses and there are returns in terms of 
charges from the industries that are sending the effluent. So, the O&M expenses and return expected onto the uh, operation of the plant is provided in the table. Now, we have to calculate the payback period for uh, this problem. So, if we tend to solve this problem, it is uh, fairly straightforward. Okay. These three points are given to us. So, we are given the capital investment, we have been given the operation and maintenance investment and the return expected. So, now if we evaluate the net cash flow, because that is what uh, one needs to evaluate for uh, such methods. So, net cash flow if you see in year 0, because we have invested 25 crores at the beginning, so at the time period 0. So, my net cash flow is minus 25 at the beginning. In year 0 or in uh, at the conception of the project, at the start of the project, there is a investment of 25 crore is done. Now, there is no O&M expenditure and no return in year 1. So, for year 1 net cash flow is 0 no cash inflow or no cash outflow. For year 2, there is an ONM investment of 1.2 crore and return expected is 4.2 crore. So, there is a net gain of plus 3 crore. So, that is my net cash flow for this particular year. Now, in year 3, if you see again the ONM expenses are 1.4 and the return expected is 6.5. So, the plus 5.1 or net 5.1 is the net cash flow from the system. Similarly, year 4 7.5 minus 1.5 is 6, year 5 is 6, year 6 is 7, year 7 is 7.2 and year 8 the 10 crore. So, this is what is the net cash flow which is obtained by uh, deducting the invest ONM investment needed in a year from the return expected in that particular year. So, now if you see the cumulative cash flow, so of course, at the beginning there is minus 25, there is no cash flow here. So, it is it will still remain minus 25. In year 2, there is a net cash flow of 3 into the system. So, this minus 25 and plus 3 will become minus 22, because 3 has been recovered, 3 has been flowed into the system in form of positive cash. So, that way the cumulative cash flow becomes minus 22. Similarly, in year 3rd when 5.1 is further coming, it is becoming 16.9, then in year 4 when 6 is further coming into the system, it is becoming minus 10.9, further 6 inflow will make it minus 4.9 and then in year 6 when 7.5 is further flowing into the system. So, that will cover up for the net depth of minus 4.9 and the cash flow will turn positive from here onwards that 2.6 crore plus. So, now if you see in the absolute term the company by the sixth end of sixth year has recovered this investment of 25 and all the ONM investments done so far and uh, has reached into a net cash flow of 2.6 into the system or positive cash flow. Further in year 7th, uh, it will it is generating 7.2, so that will raise to 9.8 and in the year 8 again it will turn to 19.8. So, this way one can see that how the cumulative cash flow is increasing into the system. Now, if we want to analyze the payback period for this proposal. So, we can see that up till year 5, 
this is outright negative net cash flow is negative and in year 6 it is turning positive. So, the cash flow uh, the, pay, the payback period for the proposal is going to be something between year 5 and year 6 up to year end of year 5 it is negative. So, it is certainly going to be greater than 5 years and it is in the year 6 it is going uh, for positive. So, that means it is less than 6 years. So, we can estimate the payback period as 5 years plus because there is a fraction of year that is needed in the 6th year there is a net flow of 7.5. However, it needs to meet the depth of only 4.9. So, 4.9 is the depth that needs to be met and 7.9 is the net inflow into the system. So, if we distribute this 7.5 across the year, we can basically take a ratio of this which is coming out to be 0 0.65. So, 5 plus 0 0.65 will be total 5.65 years which is the payback period for this proposal. So, it has to be distinctly clear that by the time the cumulative cash flow is negative, it is not, it has not met its payback period. So, the payback period is exactly when your cumulative cash flow becomes 0. So, cumulative cash flow is 0 0.4, 0 0.9 uh, here at the end of 5 year and 2.6 here at the end of uh, 6 year. So, if we linearly interpolate this 1 year's duration, we will get 0.65 year fraction value and that is going to be my net cash, uh, net payback period. Okay. So, uh, if I add 5 to this value, the 5.65 will be my payback period for this. Now, based on any criteria, any preset criteria that I fix up, let us say I fix up that I will accept this project only if my payback period is 5 years. So, on that criteria it is not meeting the payback period desired payback period and this is likely to be rejected. However, if the company is saying that okay, I will accept the project, I will accept the proposal if the payback period is let us say 10 years or 7 years, then it is within that preset payback period time and uh, the, pro the proposal will appear attractive to the company because as opposed to 7 year it is getting payback in 5.65 years and the company can certainly accept the proposal based on the payback analysis. So, that is uh, what is the basic payback method one of the most simple and one of the most uh, used method primarily use method. Okay. There are certain pros and cons. So, uh, the advantage is it is, is very easy to understand and it is little biased towards the liquidity, the cash itself while there are cons that it ignores the time value of money. That is one of the major demerits or one of the major disadvantages of the basic payback period that it is ignoring the time value of money. If you see the previous example over here, so it has considered this uh, whatever the return in the fourth year or return in the uh, return in the fourth year, sixth, fifth year, uh, let us say 6 crore return as a net 6 crore value. But investment is being made today and down the line 5 year or 6 years, this 6 crore is not equal to the 6 crore in today's term. So, I am investing today. So, my the cash flows also has to be probably in today's financial terms, today's monetary terms. However, it does not account for that and that is one of the major disadvantages of this. It uses an arbitrary cutoff point okay, uh, where there is uh, the cumulative cash flow is becoming 0 that becomes the arb cutoff point and it further ignores the cash flow beyond the cutoff rate. So, uh, like in previous example you see that if 
for a payback period method if I say that uh, this 5.65 is my payback period for the proposal. So, whatever revenue is being generated outside that payback period it does not incorporate that. It is biased against long term projects such as R and D and new projects because there the returns are expected at a much later stage whereas, investments are uh, uh, done today only. So, the payback period is going to be very large because if you are investing let us say certain amount in R and D project today you may not actually get any return for the next 4 or 5 years when the pro when if I am investing in R and D if I am let us say trying to develop a new approach of uh, waste treatment waste water treatment now that new approach will take time to develop if I have spent 5 years in developing a new approach and then it is going on to the field scale installations or commissioning. So, eventually the payback might be coming might started to or any return on to that investment might started to come after let us say 6, 7, 8, 10 years. So, for that period the there is a idle period where there is no inflow revenue and that way the payback period are going to be very large for such project or any new project for example, the previous project that we had we have taken you see there was no cash inflow in the first year or the 0 year. So, when there is no cash inflow immediately, so the your payback period is likely to be prolonged that way. So, uh, that is one of the another uh, disadvantages of this payback period. However, the major disadvantages which was we were saying is the it ignores the time value of money was considered in discounted payback period which is a modified version of payback period which is known as discounted payback period. Okay. So, this discounted payback period is the number of years or the time for the cumulative discounted cash flow to recover the initial investment. So, it is conceptually the identical to the payback period there also we were uh, measuring the cumulative cash flow and see whenever it is becoming 0 that is my payback period. However, in discounted payback period we in order to incorporate the time value of money we discount the net cash flows of the future with appropriate discount rates. So, that is the only additional step over here which is followed rest remains the same computation method is same we estimate the cash flow here also, but we discount these cash flows at a pre specified discount rate. So, whatever is the discount rate we will use that discount rate to discount these cash inflows and then subtract the future cash flows from the initial cost until investment has been recovered. The decision rules again remain the exactly identical the shorter the discounted payback period it is better we will accept the discounted payback period is less than some preset limit whatever the limit is pre specified. And uh, let us consider the earlier example for a discounted payback period case where uh, we consider 10 percent discount rate 10 percent annual discount rate. So, for the same problem for the same investment for the same O and M expenses and same return expected what will be the payback period if we consider a 10 percent discount rate. So, that means we need to adjust the time value of money with this 10 percent discount rate. So, let us see how this will uh, fare in such a scenario. Okay. Uh, up to this we have discussed in earlier problem that the net cash flow how we estimated for different years starting from uh, year 2 to year 8. Okay. Now, we discount these cash flow in order to consider the time value of money. So, that is where you see an additional row in terms of discounted cash flow. Now, what this discounted cash flow is doing if you see. So, the discount rate given in the problem is 10 percent. Okay. So, 10 percent discount rate means 1 plus 
10 by 100 and to the power n or to the power t whatever we take is going to be the discount rate applicable at that particular year nth year. So, if because 10 percent discount rate is again not going to be the uniformly distrib means 10 percent discount rate is not going to be applicable means each value will not be just discounted by 10 percent, 10 percent in first year. So, for the next year it is going to be further lower, for the next year it is going to be further lower. So, that way. So, if my net cash flow is for example, C, okay, let us say this is my net cash flow. If I want to discount it, uh, this is for year n, okay, uh, consider this uh, value for year n. If I want to discount that, so I will have to divide this number by 1 plus 10 upon 100 to the power n where uh, 10 is actually the interest rate or discount rate. Okay. So, 10 percent discount rate means 0 0.1, you divide 10 by 100 it becomes 0 0.1. So, uh, eventually it will be C n upon 1 plus 0 0.1 which is equal to 1.1 divided by n. If my discount rate is for example, 8 percent, so then this is going to be C n divided by 1.08 to the power n, okay, where n is the, this number of years. So, for n is equal to 0, this value will be 1 and your uh, net cash flow is going to remain your net cash flow. So, no change for the n is equal to 0, when your n is equal to 0. Okay. Here, since there is no cash generated anyway, so the discounted value is also going to be 0. Now, here the cash inflow generated is 3 and if you see the discounted cash flow is going to be lesser than that because this 3 is generated 2 years later. So, there is going to be the effect of this and this 3 will eventually be 3 divided by 1.1 to the power because we are into the second year. That will be 2.5. Similarly, here, similarly here for example, this one will be 6 divided by 1.1 to the power 4 and this will be 6 divided by 1.1 to the power 5. So, you see although this value is same, the net cash flow in year 4 and year 5 is same but net cash flow in year, uh, but discounted cash flow in year 4 and 5 are different because the rate of discount is changed. So, 6 crore earned in the fourth year is not equal to the 6 crore earned in the fifth year also. 6 crore earned in the fourth year is probably equal to 4.1 crore in today's term and 6 crore earned in the uh, fifth year is equal to 3.7 crores in today's term. So, with that analysis like for year, last year it is going to be 10 divided by 1.1 to the power 8 which is the time frame. So, that way we will get the discounted cash flow and instead of using the net cash flow we will use this discounted cash flow in or cumulative cash flow analysis or you can call that cumulative discounted cash flow analysis as well. So, this 25 is going to remain 25, this will remain 25 and here instead of earlier we subtracted 3, now we are going to subtract 2.5, so it is going to be 22.5. Similarly, earlier we subtracted 5.1, now we are going to subtract 3.8 and that way if you see, so up till year 7 our cumulative cash flow is 2.9 in negative, while in year 8 it is turning positive. So, up till year 7 it is negative and your payback period has not been achieved, your payback period is achieved somewhere in the 8th year. Because at the end of 8 year you are getting positive uh, cumulative cash flow, so your payback period is somewhere between year 7 and year 8 and again we can use the same concept as earlier, the payback period will be 7 year plus 
in the eighth year we need to account for 2.9 crore and our net discounted cash flow came for 4.7 crore. So, 2.9 divided by 4.7 makes it uh, 0.62. So, 7 plus 0.62 will be 7.62 years is going to be my payback period or discounted payback period. So, you can call this actually discounted payback period. So, this way a time value of money can be incorporated in a payback period as well. Okay. So, the basic payback period has been modified for a discounted payback period where time value of money has been incorporated and uh, one can see that for the same net inflow of cash if we take this example only. So, we solve this we solve this example using the basic payback period and discounted payback period method. So, the basic payback period or the standard payback period was achieved in 5.65 years while this is achieved in 7.62 years. So, a net 2 year more uh, time it took for getting the discounted payback period. So, if we consider the time value of money this is how the payback period can be uh, can shift ahead ok can shift further. So, all the recovery which was uh, earlier being done in 5.65 years is now when we consider the time value of money is now actually the investments are being recovered in 7.62 year and that is being my payback. So, if my earlier payback criteria was of let us say 7. So, then the by the means of discounted payback period this project should not be accepted while by the means of uh, payback period this project can be accepted. If my payback period is higher let us say 10 I will be happily accept the discounted payback period as well. So, that is how the discounted payback period uh, can be estimated. Okay. Uh, this also has certain pros and cons. So, uh, the advantage is it that it considers the time value of money it is uh, easy to grasp it is not that difficult. Uh, then again bias towards the liquidity the cons or the disadvantages are if the discount value is con being considered then we might want to use the more advanced methods because uh, then the discounted payback is not that easy to analyze and uh, terminologies of uh, like the NPV or IRR are more better methods when we will discuss those that will be seen ok. So, that is uh, again then the arbitrary cutoff point or ignore the cash flow of the uh, later periods is associated here also for research project and this kind of stuff again this is also going to be or very time consuming or highly capital in intensive projects this is also going to be basically create a issue because the payback period will be much longer and longer for such projects. So, those uh, traditional dis, uh, disadvantages are attached with this uh, payback period as well. So, uh, we did talk about the basic payback period which is uh, just called payback period and discounted payback period in this session uh, we will take some other methods of capital budgeting in the next sessions. Thank you.